last night, June 25th, around 9 p.m., I got a call saying that Chaos was limping. Someone had been watching her on the Verkata cams and reported her limping to Deb, who reported her limping to Afton, who reported her limping to me. And so I'm really happy that we have these cameras, but I needed to ascertain whether this was something that was an emergency that we should all run out in the middle of the night and try to catch her, or if it was something that could wait until morning. And as you can see, she's putting a little bit of pressure on her leg, not a whole lot. It's not swinging wildly like it's broken. And watch this. Yeah, she can leap like nobody's business, so there's no way we're going to catch her unless we can get her into the feeding lockout in the morning. So that's what we all decide we're going to do. Erin and Afton both went in to make sure they could catch her at feeding time, actually a little before feeding time, and by 7.44 they have her in the feeding lockout and we are getting ready to catch her in the squeeze cage and take her into the cat hospital so that we can watch her a little bit more closely. The Verkata cam is great, but it only covers this one section of her enclosure and she has many sections to her enclosure and there's a lot of time when I can't see what she's doing. In order to determine if this is an emergency that requires that we take her into the hospital and immediately sedate her for treatment, or to see if it's just that she's strained herself in some way, I've been going back through the Verkata cams to see when did this actually start. So on June the 24th at 4.45 p.m., she was already having trouble walking. You can see she's walking very, very tenderly on that left forepaw. This squeeze cage weighs about 50 pounds. It's stainless steel, and man, we use this thing all the time. We bought it back in the 90s for like, I don't know, $350, I think. Scrolling through the Verkata cam footage, it looks like this Nat Geo moment was the cause of her injury. I know that was fast. You want to see it in slow motion? After this squirrel incident, she pretty much laid under her platform until about 4.45 p.m. And then you saw earlier that by then she was limping. So I think this had to have been the cause of her injury. We definitely need to take a better look at her paw. So that means taking her into the recovery hospital and putting a camera on her there. The question is, is she gonna go in the squeeze cage or not? are amazing. I was a little nervous there for a second, not gonna lie. There's no take back. You walked in. She went in there a lot nicer than I thought she would. I don't know. She just kept trying to escape the lockout, so I thought there was a slight chance. It took me to put it on in her like an inch. I know, but it just seems like I think you're right here. Andrea. She's also the Watch her head. Watch that sheet and the yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> all over. Are 
With the camera, I hope. So we can see what's going on there. I have to set it up like, yeah. I take it you couldn't see anything when she was in lockout, like a puncture no, or anything. I see if I thought it looked swollen or anything, but a part of me feels like it's on the underneath side of whatever is bothering her. Because hmm. I didn't, doesn't look any different size than the other one. And she, um, trying to get over like the humps of the tunnel, she very gingerly was like, ugh. Like, so I don't know if it's something or underneath because it's not flopping or moving in a way it shouldn't, I guess. That's good news. and spit in there. <laughs> Which is probably why most of you don't have children. Uh -huh. <laughs> It is a very cushy looking bed. Mm -hmm. well, Man. I call it the sexy bed. <laughs> the sexy bed and the black. We'll keep an eye on her and keep you posted.